Roberto Nelson trying to dry the basketball off. Some in-game maintenance. That's the score for you, making sure the basketball is just how he likes it. Well, you called for him to run. Maybe they wanted to, but he said, you know what, I'm not going to take a chance with a basketball that's made for a turnover. Smart play. And now if you're Roberto, you stop the play. Now you have to score. Charlie Barton ducks inside, leaves it for Collier. There it is. I like that. I like that from Charlie Barton. Dribble penetration. Give the Hawks a taste of their own medicine. They've been driving you all game long, forcing defensive rotations. Do the same thing. You have the height advantage. Collier joins Angus Brant in double figures, gives OSU a 42-34 lead. He's saying, he's saying, feed me. What, what more do I have to do, fellas? I'm shooting 70% from the field. I might have let you down one time, but I'm not going to do it twice. Jeepers, it's the Creeper. <laughs> what do we do now? It's a mystery. I know. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <gasps> Zoinks! It's Lucy, like our favorite State Farm major lady. Hi, gang. I'll handle it. And that's not really a monster. <laughs> Mr. Carswell. You meddling kids. <laughs> State Farm takes the mystery out of dealing with insurance. Get to a groovier state. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Oh, I... I won! Fantastic! This is not our last day, nor our final hour. And tonight, as long as the fire burns in us, we will fight. Bite into our spiciest new creations and pull to win millions of prizes with a chance to win one of thousands of Xbox One entertainment systems. We may have come in as customers, but we leave as... Legends. There's something for everyone to win at McDonald's. Game one of our triple header just underway here in the second half. 42-34 Oregon State over Maryland Eastern Shore. Coming up next, we'll have Washington State playing host to Pepperdine. And then we'll go to Southern California for Bakersfield and the Trojans. That's at 7 o'clock. More Pac-12 basketball on the way as soon as we are done. And speaking of USC, I was in Southern California last week, Lamar, and they hired Andy Enfield to breathe some life, to attract some attention to this USC basketball program. Uh -oh. One of the ways he's done it is by finding Firing some shots across town at UCLA. JB, get down. Shots have been fired. I repeat, get down. This is this this is the second UCLA statement that's been made by him. To remember early in the preseason in, in workouts, he made a comment to his team saying, "If you want to play slow, go over to UCLA." So I think, I think it's pretty clear that he's not a fan of UCLA. One of the many storylines that we have to look forward to as we look ahead to the new year and the start of the conference schedule. You gotta like it. Southern Cal is all about drama Hollywood, and we are getting it from USC so far. Jones curling into a deep three. We're getting some drama here as well as the Hawks have rebounded from what was a slow start to knock down some shots. They weathered the storms. They took Oregon State's best punch in that first half. And that shot is another way of doing it here. Kyrie Jones has 11, right back to Collier on the Beavs end, and he is going to the strike. Good patience from Oregon State, not just settling for that outside jump shot. Uh, again, let's see how long they stick with this, where they force the ball to the paint. If they do it correctly, they'll find themselves getting easy kickouts for threes, and that's when you want to take your outside jump shot. As Collier goes back to the line, I'm reminded that part of being the top scoring tandem in the country, along with Roberto Nelson, is that between them, they're attempting more than 18 free throws per contest. They both have a knack for getting fouled. Devon, that's been the case for him since his freshman year just being a lefty you know he's pretty wiry he's stronger than he looks he's always done a good job getting to the foul line 
six-point lead for Oregon State with Lamar Hurd. I'm J.B. Long. Our producer today, Aaron Owens. Our director, Steve Turnberger. Glad you're with us for the first of three here on the networks today after the conference went 8-0 on Saturday. Robbins and Collier combining for that trap, but they fouled Baxter in the process, and that's against Collier, his second. Well, against this 1-3-1, one, one, if you're the Hawks, that's the last place you want to pick the basketball up, right across the half-court line, because now you go from two defenders in the 1-3-1 one, one to four defenders at a half-court line and the sideline. They got to get better spacing. If you place guys in the right spot, they will automatically be open. Just because of how the 1-3-1 one, one is set up, it, it starts off leaving four wide open spots on the court. Lewis Bell checks in, placing Ishak Pitts. Even with the sideline inbound, Robbins and the Beavs able to set up this 1-3-1 one, one again. Uh, Johnson handles here. Well, Robbins doing a good job of being long at the top of it. Now that's the play to make and, and what Oregon State is going to have to be careful of as they play a higher level of competition is that weak side guy running for that alley-oop lob because once it gets to Pac-12 conference play that's a lob pass and a dunk. Yeah, the Hawks don't have the personnel but if that's Aaron Gordon yeah. <laughs> that's a broken rim. It's a different rim. story, yeah. Four minutes into this second half Angus Grant left alone just inside the line. Confidence throw up there. Good ball rotation. Angus is ready to catch and shoot. And he has one of the nicest shots on his team. Baxter ran into Roberto Nelson. Reverses direction. Now Johnson gets inside the free throw line. On the kick to the corner. Bell off the mark. Randall secures a second chance. second kick of this second half and that will send us to our first media timeouts of the second half 45 37. This is Pac-12 Sports Report. Let's talk some UCLA women's basketball. We'll take you from the pitch to the pool and everywhere in between. A lot to get to over the next 30 minutes. Pac-12 Sports Report Monday at 6 30 on Pac-12 Networks. When I was younger, coming to the U.S., it was a dream to me. I was determined that this is where I'm going to be. So it really means a lot to me to be able to be here and to succeed. I learned a lot from my dad. Being hardworking, being honest, same value that we instill into this company. Bank of the West has fantastic resources that assist with overseas transactions. They help us grow. Today, we distribute our products worldwide. You have to work with people that really believe in your dream. That's Bank of the West. You hear that? That's the sound of car insurance companies these days. Here at Cheap, there at Cheap, everywhere at Cheap, you get it. So what if instead of just a cheap choice, you could make a smart choice? Like eSurance, for example. They were born online and built to save people money from the beginning. That's what they've always done. Not just something they cheap about. That's insurance for the modern world. eSurance, now backed by Allstate. Click or call. Up next, men's basketball continues. The Washington State Cougars go up against Pepperdine. Shot clock runs down. Woolridge going hard. The trailer is Shelton. Live coverage continues next on Pac-12 Networks. Pac-12 basketball is brought to you by eSurance. Now offering savings for Pac-12 students and alumni. Find out more at eSurance.com slash Pac-12. And by Quicken Loans for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. If you continue down this hallway at Gill Coliseum and then take a left, a right, and then two more lefts, there's there's one of these of Lamar somewhere. I've seen it. I've seen it once. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hidden. It's hidden somewhere around the back. But there goes the man right there, there, Gary Payton. Arguably the best player to come through here. Langston Morris Walker in for the Bees as they match up defensively. Oregon State cannot get lazy in the zone. Maryland Eastern Shore is showing that they can knock down jump shots. Bell rattles out. And that was a near make there, though. I, I mean, I really enjoyed the time that they were in a man-to-man -man because I felt like that's the best way for them to match up and have responsibilities, get out to shooters. You don't want to allow the Hawks to do what they did in the first half, knock down a few shots, get confident, tie the game, and even take the lead. Man. 
the defense was the focal point during that long layoff between contests while they took exams. Collier spins to the baseline, and he has been exploiting the Hawks without Francis Ezra on the floor. Offensively, the Beavers doing what they need to do, getting the ball down there to the paint like we talked about. They haven't shot a three-point shot yet this half. Jones will launch again. This one goes. That's what you're up against when you're in the zone. You mentioned Collier normally catches those throw ahead yeah. passes. This time he does. He has good hands, and that's trusted in him. You know, Roberto could have said, you know, the first half, you drop that one. I'm not throwing it again, but that's trusted in your teammates. Just continue the thought on the man-to-man -man defense here on Friday night against Arkansas Pine Bluff. They held that team to 63. Fewest by an opponent this year. Well, that time, that was a big-time shot. Angus Brandt didn't really turn Jones back. Jones is really probing, just trying to get a little bit of a space, and that was a big-time shot. So, too, is Nelson, and he's going to the line. What you just saw is two, two big guards. Probing the defense and getting the shots they need for Oregon State. It's the interior play. I, mean, I don't know how many times you got to talk about this guy's field goal percentage, 70%. You have to throw him the basketball. Now, here goes the other score. Now the stars are being stars. Highest scoring tandem in the country, playing like it. Collier leaves with 17. Nelson at the line, building on an 11-point night so far. Nelson has scored in double figures now in 24 consecutive games going back to last season. The school record, well, he's not going to get there no matter how deep into the postseason they go. It's 89 by one Mel Counts. 89 straight double figure games. Wow. That's why he was one of the best to play basketball here. Devin Walker able to break the pressure. Ezru back into the contest. I think Frankie Allen feeling like he couldn't delay the inevitable anymore. I think that was a good time by Coach Allen to get him back in there. You don't want to let this thing get out of hand. Shoftenar and Craig. Angus Brantz. Craig Robinson yelling at Olaf to throw the basketball down. It goes back to his game plan. I mean, he, he has said there's been games so far this season where that's the game plan, but the guys just don't follow it. So there he's forcing them. Ezra back into the contest, and he has made a difference. Back-to-back -back buckets. Good dribble penetration. Ezra's a big target down there, so if there's any seams that open up, you can slide the ball to him, and he can finish. Jarmal Ree left alone. He's not a shooter. Shoftenar is. Passes again here because, again, the mandate from the coaching staff is get it to Brandt inside. He pulls it off the glass and earns a trip to the strike. That time Angus had to go get it himself. Oregon State uh, just a little discombobulated. You know, that's not necessarily a, a very bad shot, but make offense simple for yourself. If it's working, don't, don't fix it. Remember we talked in the first half about how green a light Olaf Shoftenar had yeah. for Craig Robinson. No, I mean, I could see why there's that moment of hesitation because when he sees a defender back off, he's thinking, you know, a year ago, I'm supposed to let this fly. Now my coach wants me to dump it down. Well, and, and you know what? That, that's some of the difficulties a, a player's coach struggles with. You know, Lorenzo Romar is a guy I think is going through the same thing. These are coaches that allow their players to, to make their own decisions. They, they, they take the leash off of them. They say, go out there and play basketball. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a high quality IQ player that you're given the reins to. Otherwise, you find yourself standing up yelling and <laughs> telling him to throw the ball down to the paint. And there will come a time in Olaf's career where he'll have a sense for that, right? I mean, yeah. based on the game plan, he'll know when the time for Sure. right to let it fly and when the time is right to for, put it down. For sure, and that's some of the strategy as a coach. You, you know you're going to go through some growing pains, Olaf only being a sophomore, but the expectancy is that he gets this very quickly, hopefully this season, but for sure by next year, but he, he needs to get it now. Daniel Gomez checks in. 13-minute mark. It's 55-46 OSU. Tyree Jones against Reed. Good head by Olaf. Three buckets in a row for Ezeru. Not this time. They'll keep it, though, with 19 to shoot. Oh, it looked like Ezeru might have shuffled the feet a little bit, but it, before that, Gomez might have gotten away with a bit of a push, so the referee is letting them play down on the block. You can hear the Oregon State bench call out shooter right as Jones caught it. They did not close out in time. I'll tell you what, he has a nice touch. Came into the game shooting 38% from three, but he has a 50% type of stroke. Looks really good coming off his hands. Speaking of 50% strokes, 
Shot by number 55. Well, that's the answer. That, that, that's what stars do. Jones kind of rocking into his own answer. He could, he could see him coming all the way down the floor. He wanted that shot. Yeah, he cleared out the side. He, he wanted to go one-on-one, -on -one, but he could have gotten a better look. Nelson picks his way, feeding Shaftanar. There it is. That's, that's the one, the, the, the kick out. When he has his feet set, he's ready. He doesn't have to do any one bounce, two bounce pull-ups. He allowed the shot to come to him. But Lamar, I also noticed it comes with different personnel on the floor, right? It's Daniel Gomez in the block now, not Angus Brandt and Devon right. Collier. So now he's free to take that shot because he is one of their best options. You are exactly right, JB. That, that, that's recognition, knowing the personnel on the court. Well, Nelson now has 15 points. Timeout on the floor, 11.52. This was a three that got him to 15. Well, great screen from Gomez that allowed Roberto to turn the corner, and now he's attacking Ezeru. is supposed to be guarding Olaf Shaftenar, but any coach sees his player, we'll give up a three before we give up a layup. And Olaf in the right place at the right time, spacing out as Roberto comes his way and knocks it down. See, the three-point shooting's been good on both sides. Oregon State at 47% from the floor. I mention that because they've just got this interesting streak of five straight games of 50% shooting or better going. You know, you might say, well, that's been against these types of teams, but they had the same thing at Maryland, at DePaul. And they're able to score with, with the best of teams. Their, their challenge is going to be the defensive end of the floor this season. Smith keeps his dribble. Got past Cook. Cook comes away with possession. Collier back into the contest on the move here. Got it to Gomez, trailing the play. Coordinated move by Daniel Gomez. How about the two bigs in the two-on-one opportunity? Devon Collier in the first half, he dropped that pass. Since then, his hands are back to normal. Didn't force the issue there. Didn't have a clear layup. Pulled back, allowed Gomez get close, and a nice finish. Seen Jones do it from the outside, now trying to get in and lost control. Roberto Nelson from Shaftenau. Last touch by the Hawks. Timeout us, 11.01 to go. B starting to pull away. I'm shopping for a right to be healthy. Well, I'll be shopping for an opportunity to sleep at night. I am definitely shopping for preventative care. I'm shopping for catastrophic coverage. I'm shopping for excellent coverage for my children. For pre-existing conditions. Low deductible. For my family and then my employees. I'm shopping for peace of mind. For the most comprehensive plan. The Big Apple is Pac-12 territory. Go Trojans! Fight on! Go Pac! Go team! Oregon State! Fight, fight, fight! Go Huskies! Go Pac! Go Hughes! City Pac-12 Alumni Associations love the Pac-12 Network. Lamar is going to use our Quicken Loans amazing play of the game to show us how Roberto Nelson and Devon Collier have got it going in the second half. Well, stars have to be stars. They were not shining at all in the first half, but we talked about going down to the halftime locker room and not changing your game plan, just sticking to what you know you need to do, and they did that. They came out here, they got Devon Collier back in the post, they played inside out. Once it started to open up, Roberto Nelson started to assert himself, and now they're back to normal form. These are the type of numbers you're used to seeing from these two guys. Only had 13 points combined at the half. Now they're at 20. 
What is that, 32? Yeah, you don't want to, yeah, it's 32. You don't want to ask me, though. Math was not one of my strong points, JB. They are averaging 48 points per game combined. You know, that one, leads the nation. One thing that has helped is, is no turnovers so far this half, so they've gotten attempts each time down the court, and it's resulted in more good than bad. A little too quick on the perimeter move there. Isaac Smith the third. The turnover gives it back to Oregon State. A good job from Devon Collier and Transition D to step up and defend Smith. Last touch by the Hawks. Oregon State will keep it. Only two ticks off the shot clock. So Shoftonar Collier, Daniel Gomez, Roberto Nelson, and Cook, the five for Oregon State right now. Oregon State has a huge size advantage right now. Great find inside. Collier pays it off. He's got 19. One of the better games I've seen Olaf Shoftonar play, both passing and shooting. Yeah, he's allowed the game to come to himself. He hasn't forced bad shots. He's, he's made the right play. He's made all three of his three-point attempts, created there for Collier. And, and some guys like Olaf, who has always found his identity in the offensive end, it helps him when he makes shots, you know, gets him more attentive on the defensive end. Had a hand in Troy Snyder's face there, caused the miss. Cook running. Collier cleaning up. A third try. How about a three-point play? He might miss one. But the numbers say he's going to make the second one. He's a great rebounder. He sees the basketball. The guy who shoots it knows where it's going before everybody else does. And there, the, the nice pass from Olaf that we saw. But Devon has clearly made himself a force in the paint. In the course of collecting those rebounds, he now has another double-double, fourth of the season for the senior from the Bronx. Smooth Deb 44 could not complete the three-point play, though, leaving one at the line. Gomez to the floor, and they'll get it on the arrow. Great hustle. Daniel Gomez, he's expected to make those type of hustle plays. Oregon State coaching staff just happy he's playing again after being out for two years. And they've been waiting to showcase this guy along with their other talented frontline players. You can see how a lot of pieces are there for Craig Robinson. I, I know the expectations are low in terms of the, the conference poll as Nelson will have a chance for three again. But you know, Eric Moreland coming back and Shoftonar and Gomez playing their roles. I don't think Gil Coliseum is going to be a place that many Pac-12 teams want to visit. Yeah, you know what? As long as they defend well, because all those guys you just talked about, they, they've exhibited offensive firepower, and at times they've shown some good defensive fortitude, but it's just it's just that continual attention to detail that they need to pay on the de defensive end that will, I believe, make or break their season. Remember how we talked at halftime about how Francis Ezru was the only post for the Hawks, only had two fouls, yeah. Oregon State needed to attack him. Well, 9.53 left, and he's fouled out. JB, you should be a coach one of these days. Yeah, Some right. of the stuff that you call out. Think I could recruit? Would you send <laughs> your son to play for hey, me? I, Give me a break. I, yeah, man. I, I would trust him other than your food choices. Your basketball <laughs> choices are fine. Yeah, you thought I wasn't going to get into this. Other than your food choices. Hey, I got Roberto Nelson on my side you know when what? it comes hey, to our uh, both of you. I got preference. something for both of you guys. Because <laughs> right, both of you guys are misinformed. Roberto Nelson sided with me when it comes to the Qdoba Chipotle debate earlier this afternoon. Gomez closing the gap from the weak side. He knocked Akeem Baxter to the deck. <laughs> I'm not sure Baxter's ready to come off the floor despite yeah, he his wants teammates to rest a little bit. pulling himself to his feet. You know, I remember seeing YouTube video of Daniel Gomez. He went to Oak Hill Academy, a, a very renowned high school preparatory in Virginia, and he had those kind of plays, you know, two feet above the rim, blocking shots, catching alley-oop dunks, and that's why Craig Robinson was so excited about him finally having a chance to play. I mentioned his coordination on that catch and layup just a few minutes ago. I think what I've been impressed is that uh, there hasn't been a lot of rust for a player who's effectively coming off a double rich. Yeah, yeah, you, you're, you're right. You're right. You'd expect him to need more time to just get the feel for things. I mean, it doesn't matter how long you 
you train with your coaches in the off season. You, you do five on five pickup. There's nothing like game minutes. And for him being out so long, you're, you're exactly right. I thought it would have taken more time, but he's his learning curve is a little shit than most people's. His hands are good. His timing is excellent. His footwork is all right, you know. Baxter at the free throw line. You, know, you look up and suddenly it's a 20 point game. Remember, it's just one point at halftime. The Beavs have played much better here in the seconds. They defend and got some stops. Then they were able to run. They, they followed the offensive game plan, but they started with some stops. That's what enabled them to get out and run, not having to take the ball out of the net. Smith, Baxter, and the Hawks showing some full court pressure here. Almost halfway home in our second half. Alice Cook and Malcolm DeVivier getting an opportunity to run the show for Craig Robinson. Collier's working on a game high 21. His pass to Gomez deflected over the end line. Well, with the Hawks being down by so much, they're going to get out of pressure. And so there'll be a lot of one on one offensive opportunities for Oregon State. If I'm them, I'm going down to Devon Collier until he doesn't want the basketball anymore. Angus Grant back in, gets a deep touch. It's kind of an over-the-shoulder, yeah. two-handed haul. Well, well, either one, both Angus and Devon have considerable size advantages over their defenders, so I I'm going down to those two guys. Grant has 17, one of three Oregon State players in double figures. Alex Cook on the move. Saw that Smith was there initially and then almost lost track of him. Well, that's what Craig Robinson is in his air saying. You got to have that recognition as a point guard. You have to know that play. You just beat him off the bounce. He's right behind you. Got to value possessions. Word for Victor Robbins before he enters the contest. Robbins is going to come back into this game. 0 of 3 from the floor, yet to score. He'll get Olaf Shoftenar. Robbins, a player who's averaging better than eight per contest here in his sophomore season. Posted a career high five assists in Friday's win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Alice Cook misses them both. Well, for the Beavers already offensively, playing a, a much better second half. First half only with 34 points. Smith, the third from three. Rebound Collier. Cook challenge off that screen, maintains his dribble. Brant set it for him, now sets up Collier. He has his uncanny ability to double clutch in the post. Yeah, he... He just knows how to work down there. He has really good footwork. He used to be a player that would only turn over that right shoulder. Now he's accustomed to going both ways. He's comfortable doing it. And as you said, he has the ability to just hang and draw those fouls. And he's stronger than he looks. At 6'8", he's not the biggest four or five you'll see in the league. I wonder if that's part of it, is he's just kind of learned to play that undersized big man game. And that's why he gets the line so much, is the first ball you see is not the one that's going to come out of his hand. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, usually you see that the, the undersized post guys are, are typically clever because that's their only way to score. They're not going to out-athletic a lot of guys, even though Devon is pretty athletic. But he's, he's more crafty. After that free throw, he takes a seat. Shea Enjai challenging that shot into the contest to take his place. And it'll go over to the Beavs. Well, we've got more Oregon State basketball for you on the Pac-12 Networks as we get into the holiday season. Lamar and I will be here for Towson and the Beavs on Wednesday night. Towson is a team that handed the Oregon State program a bad home loss in overtime last year. Some of you will see San Francisco State against Washington State as well. Pack-12.com is your place to go to find out which game you'll see in your area and also for the latest on what's happening around the conference, especially on the football side of things as we dig into bowl season. 
was talking with the great sports information director Sean Scheffler here at Oregon State about how the schedule is actually going to work out in Hawaii at the Diamond Head Classic. The Bears will play two games and then have Christmas Eve off as Oregon State takes the football field yeah. to play their bowl game and then the Christmas Day finale for the Bees. That'd be great. Both of these programs, football and basketball, they do a good job supporting each other. Craig Robinson and Mike Rowley, the football coach, always sending each other supportive tweets before the others' games. So that'd be special for the men's basketball team to support the football team in their bowl game. Inside of eight, Victor Robbins looking for his first points. Missed a tough shot. I was thinking as we send it to Mike Yam for our State Farm halftime report. Here, Yam finally gets a non football weekend, and we threw eight games at him yesterday and three he more don't today. Need a break. <laughs> Mike Yam does not need a break. Come on. One and three from Bell. Robbins a chance to run out. Only Jones between him and the rim. A nice step through, and he's in the scoring column. Good move. Athletic guard. You know, he wasn't quiet last season about not having a chance to play a lot of minutes with Ahmad Starks, who was here, the smaller guard, who hurt the Beavers defensively, helped him a lot of times offensively, but he hurt him sometimes offensively as well because he shot the ball so much, and if he wasn't scoring, it wasn't looking good. And Robbins said, if coach gives me the opportunity, he won't regret it. Malcolm DeVivier with a corner opportunity. That cheerleader, the best chance to catch and finish that play as Hakeem Baxter couldn't get there. Inside of seven, timeout on the floor. 77-51, OSU. December, experience the gift of true artistry and some of the best offers of the year at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. This is the pursuit of perfection. It's college football season and the orders are pouring in. Sales spike, I'm happy. Profits up, I'm happy. Millions of fans, no time, I'm nervous. Can we handle the logistics? Use UPS. Digital tracking, proactive alerts, less paperwork. We save time, customers get what they need. Everybody's happy. Hey! Buckeye's happy. Gator's happy. Hog's happy. I'm happy. 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 It's a win. 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 I love logistics. At Jeep, we're giving you everything you need this holiday with Jeep Grand Cherokee, Jeep Wrangler, and an all-new Jeep Cherokee. And that means you can give a little something back. Come get some of the best deals of the year at the Jeep Big Finish event. Well-qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles can lease the 2014 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4 for $2.99 a month. This December, experience the gift of exacting precision and some of the best offers of the year at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. This is the pursuit of perfection. Pac-12 basketball is brought to you by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Corvallis and Lamar heard whatever Craig Robinson said to his beeves at halftime. It has worked. Yes, it has. I'm sure he was aggressive in that locker room. Just trying to remind his guy to, hey, follow the game plan. We want to get it down to Devon Collier, a guy who's shooting 70 plus percent from the field. Let's let Roberto Nelson operate in some space. We have the highest score in tandem in the country, but it's got to start to paint. Got to throw the ball down there, and they've done it this half. Leading the points in the paint battle now, 42 to 12. That it tells the story. Nine threes in the first half. Only three attempted here in the second to kind of prove your point that they've rededicated themselves to the, the post. Even when it's Roberto Nelson getting a deep catch, unable to finish, and he'll pick up a foul in the backcourt. Well, we've already talked about it. They've been able to score a lot more this half, 34 points in the first half. They've more than doubled that so far this half with six minutes, 46 seconds left to go. 
and make it, make, making the game simple. It's almost a lost art. It's one of those things that coaches look for. You know, Sean Miller at Arizona, number one team in the country. We talked about T.J. McConnell being his, his first true point guard. And, and you see how much better that team is looking this season than in years prior. And everybody's looking for that true guard or that true leader on the court. Oh. That was Roberto. Shades of Joe Burton there. He got popped in the mouth, but no whistle. Smith at the other end rolls it in while Nelson continues to bite his jersey. Well, you wonder if he got hit before shot because we haven't seen that one come out of his arsenal yet. Victor Robbins curling off his screen. I wonder if his elbow got tapped because that came up well short. Devin Walker will stop at the free throw line. What is this happens? You're, you're up 24 points. You know you have this one in hand. You, you tend to, as we talked about, paying attention to detail. You, you start to forget about some of the little things. As a shooter there, Robbins didn't follow through the way he needs to. He's not that bad of a shooter that he comes up two feet short. But as one of those teams that has something to prove, you have to take advantage of every.